Okay, so if you had difficulty doing a valve adjustment this morning, this is, uh, I'll be doing it again here for you so that you can see clearly and pause and not have tons of silent gaps like in the video that we made this morning. So first steps to adjusting the valves are take off the tappet covers, all four, and take off the points cover. Remember there's a gasket underneath. There are two screws holding it on. <clears throat> so once you have these off and this off, um, you're going to need a 14 millimeter wrench or socket because you're going to be turning the alternator and you'll need a 12 millimeter wrench or socket, actually a wrench, for sure a wrench, because you're going to be loosening these nuts right here. You will also need a flathead screwdriver and I would say grab the one with the, the widest tip. So don't get a small screwdriver, get the one with the widest tip. Uh, this is the longest one and the widest one that I have at my disposal at the moment. So essentially what we're doing, the purpose of this is we are making a specific space between the rocker arm, which I'm moving, and the top of the valve, which is in the dead center of the spring. So there has to be a very specific gap between these two. That's called adjusting the valves. So that's what we're going to do here. <clears throat> uh, so in order to adjust the valves, your rocker arms have to be loose. So the first step is to make sure they're loose. So uh, in order to ensure that they're loose, the cam lobes, which is this smooth, shiny part here that the rocker arm is touching, both rocker arms are touching that. The lobe, remember, is shaped like an egg. And the top of the lobe, the tip of the egg, cannot be pointing up and pushing this rocker arm up. Because if this rocker arm's pushing up, remember it's like a seesaw, if this is pushing up, then that means this part is pushing down and it's not loose. It's super tight and you can't get this clicking noise. And on this one over here, the, the lobe is pointing up, therefore this rocker arm can't move. But that's just to show you what it might look like. We are only working on the left side of the engine. <clears throat> so remember, the left side is this side. This is the right side. We are working on the left side. This is the intake valve, because this is where the gas and the air comes in, so intake. And then this is the exhaust valve. This is where the burnt gases come out and go to the muffler. So intake is the rear, exhaust is the front. We are working on the left side of the engine. <clears throat> So first thing we got to do is we got to make sure that the valves are not being pressed down on by the rocker arms. So you take your 14 millimeter wrench or socket and you start rotating this and keeping an eye up here and you'll see there's the top of the cam lobe right here. It's coming up. Right now it's loose. It's still loose. In a couple seconds, this one's going to tighten up because it's going to put all the pressure on that rocker arm. So now it gets harder for me to turn. And you can see it pushed that rocker arm up. And now I cannot shake this. It can't move. It's, this one's still loose. This one is tight. So I'm continuing to turn this in a counterclockwise direction down here. And now 
the top of that lobe is passing under the exhaust valve rocker arm. And then pretty soon here, we will see that the intake, watch, we're going to see that top of the spring is going to start moving down. Let me zoom in here. So as I continue to rotate this, you can see that the top of the spring is moving down. That's because the rocker arm is pushing it down, and that's because there's a cam lobe that is pushing up on the other side of the rocker arm. So that means that right there, the valve is fully open. Remember the valve has that stem and at the bottom of the stem is the, is that round part that you, uh, you did the lapping of the valves with that little toothpaste stuff and spun it around in there. So right now that round part of the valve is pushed down and when it's pushed down, that's letting the air and the gas come in through here and get into the cylinder head, into the cylinder. So it's coming in through here where the carburetor would be. Gas and air mixture is coming in. And because this is now pushed down and open, it can make its way into the cylinder. We don't want it open for the purpose of adjusting the valve. So we have to keep turning. And now the valve is the, it's gonna start closing. You're gonna see that spring start to come back up. So now it is all the way back up and that is loose again both are loose we want both to be loose once they're both loose now all you got to do is continue turning the uh, alternator until the LT mark is at the indexing mark. So this is the LF mark and, oh, went too far. The LT mark right there. So we need the LT mark to be exactly at that spot in order to do this valve adjustment. And the part that sucks about this is the only reason it's there right now is because I'm still holding my ratchet against it. As soon as I let go, it moves on its own. So as you do this, you're going to have to keep one hand holding this thing where it's supposed to be, which makes things kind of a pain in the butt. But it's just the way it is. <clears throat> okay, so with the LT mark where it's supposed to be. This valve, this rocker arm is loose, and this rocker arm is loose. If you only have one loose, and the other is not, actually, if you don't have either of them loose, and your LT mark is where it's supposed to be, your next step is to loosen the... Uh, Loosen this nut. You need to loosen this nut here and loosen this nut here. And I'm not saying that you need to take them off. You certainly do not need to take them off. And you don't even need to turn it out this much. If you turn it out this much, that's too much. You only need to make it loose. Like right, right here is finger tight. That's as far as I make, I'm turning it to make it loose. That's it. This here is about finger tight. That's loose. That's, 
as loose as you need to make it. So if you are having trouble getting your rocker arms to move, chances are okay. your rocker arm shafts are not in an ideal spot. Now, if you take a close look at this rocker arm shaft, you can see that there's a little tiny hash mark right there. It's pointing to the right. If you can get your screwdriver in here and spin it so that it's pointing straight up like that, that will give you the most play in your rocker arm. So this one is already pointing up right there. See that little tiny mark right there? So with both of those marks pointing up, these rocker arms are extremely loose. And that is the ideal situation right now. If you have trouble turning these, um, all I can suggest is using two hands and doing your best to, to turn those. If, if you still, what sucks is if you start trying to turn this and If you start trying to turn this rocker arm shaft and it's not turning and you start fighting with it and then it starts slipping out and starts mangling this slot, that's not good. So uh, if, if this nut is loose and your alternator is at LT and you still cannot move this, then take a second look at your cam lobes. If you have a cam lobe that is pointing up like this one, then you need to spin your alternator all the way around one more time. Even if it's at LT right now, spin it around again. Do one whole spin and get the LT back on here and, and then try to turn these rocker shafts because there's a chance that you have a, a cam lobe pointing up and you didn't even really realize it. If you have both the cam lobes where they're supposed to be, neither of them are pointing up and you have the LT where it's supposed to be and you have these two loose and you still cannot turn these, uh, then you need to let me know that. You need to shoot me an email or something and let me know that you have indeed verified that these are loose, this is LT, no cam lobe is pointing up, And yeah, and then if you can't do it, then if you can't, if you can't rotate these and you can't get these to loosen, then you can't really go much further on this side of the engine. You can still try the other side, but this side don't damage these things. So I'm assuming I'm going to keep moving on here and assume that you are able to make these loose. And the next step is to uh, so we're on page 34 and 35 in the manual, and you need your feeler gauges out. Of course, I don't have feeler gauges here because that would make too much sense, but uh, I'm going to... If you don't know what a feeler gauge is, then I suggest you Google it and so you can see what they are in your uh, toolbox. But it's it's a bunch of little tiny metal fingers all packed together in a thing and they can kind of fan out and they're really thin like paper thin pieces of metal and they have little numbers on them. You need to find your feeler gauges and you need to find the one that has the number 0 .002 inches 
or it might have 0 0.05 millimeters on it. That is the feeler gauge that you need to find and get that one out and ready to go. And what you're going to do here is you're going to take the feeler gauge and you're going to push it in between the rocker arm and the top of the valve. And you want to fit it right in between there. Show you as best I can. So you're going to take your feeler gauge and you're going to slide it in between the rocker arm and the valve. And if if you're at LT, which you definitely should be at LT, if you're at LT, this should be um, sliding very easily, and in fact, too easily. That means the gap is too big. So we want to squeeze things together to the point where you can no longer move this. And you do that by turning the, uh, you turn the rocker on your shaft, which is this guy here. So I'm gonna turn it 90 degrees to the right. And I'm gonna see what's going on with my feeler gauge and it's very tight in there. Like maybe, actually that's not bad. I can still move it and I can feel that it is touching both the top and the bottom at the same time. So it is, um, there's some drag on it. Like I can feel that the rocker arm is pushing down on it and the top of the valve is pushing up on it. So it's, that's exactly where it needs to be. And I did that only by turning the rocker arm shaft 90 degrees to the right. And I like that. That's where it needs to be. So I'm gonna pull the feeler gauge out and I did that while keeping the LT mark where it was supposed to be. So I was holding a wrench on the LT mark the whole time I was doing this. So it's still a little loose. We measured the gap between here and it is exactly 0 0.002 inches or 0 0.05 millimeters. So because that's where I like it and that's where it's gotta be, now I am going to tighten this nut while holding the uh, rocker arm shaft with the screwdriver. So you can let go of the alternator bolt and you're going to take your, your 12 millimeter wrench, you're going to take your screwdriver and you're going to put it in here and you're just gonna hold it. You're gonna make sure that it doesn't move while you tighten this nut. So, just gonna do this and boom, tight, done. Intake valve on the left side of the engine is now adjusted and set and done. So now I need to do the same thing with the exhaust valve, which is on this side. And the exhaust valve has a different feeler gauge uh, dimension that you need to use. If you look on page 35, the exhaust valve clearance should be 0 0.004 inches or 0 0.10 millimeters. So you got to find a different feeler gauge. And... Uh, we have to do the same thing. We have to hold it to LT. We have to use the feeler gauge. We gotta do the whole thing again. So, I'm going to put the engine on the LT mark, which is right there. And this is nice and loose, super loose. I'm gonna take my 0 0.004 
feeler gauge and I'm going to slide it there in between these two and it's extremely loose, too loose. And then um, I am going to do the same thing with the rocker arm shaft. The other one I turned 90 degrees to the right. This one I'm going to turn 90 degrees to the left. So that little hash mark is now pointing directly to the left. And check the... Yeah, that's way better. That's probably perfect. I can feel the... I can feel everything pushing on my feeler gauge. So if I pull the feeler gauge out, it still moves. It's a little tighter than it was, even though you can barely feel that difference. And now because it's where it's supposed to be, I'm going to let go of the 14 millimeter on the alternator. And I'm gonna put my 12 millimeter wrench on the nut. I'm going to secure the rocker arm shaft with the screwdriver so it doesn't move. And I'm gonna tighten this guy up. Done. So both of these valves are now done. And uh, we need to do the right side of the engine next. And it is the same procedure, except we have to spin the alternator around one full turn so that now instead of the left piston being all the way up, we've got to get it all the way down so that the right piston is all the way up. So page 35. Oh, so page 35. Step number seven, turn the alternator rotor bolt counterclockwise 180 degrees until the T mark aligns with the index. So this is not, huh, this is not the LT mark. I was slightly mistaken about this being the exact same procedure. So down here is the T. So now we rotate this guy around to the T mark, which is right there. And luckily, it kind of stays. Thank God, it makes things easier. So now we have the T mark matched up perfectly with the index mark, and now we can do the other side of the engine. Take first. So right now these should be loose and they are loose. And I need to take off I need to take off the this cover. I need to access those rocker arm shafts. So get your Allen head or your Phillips head, whichever kind of screw you've got in here and take this cover off. Remember, this one does not have a gasket. And we're going to do the same thing. You have to loosen these, these nuts. That's as loose as you need to make it. You do not need to even get close to taking it off. Okay. So alternator is where it needs to be. These are loose. Both these are loose. Um, and we use the feeler gauge to do the intake. And that was the point zero zero two inches. So we slide this in. 
like that. Slide your feeler gauge in. Remember, make sure you're using the right one. And that's pretty loose, probably too loose. So I'm going to rotate this. You can see how this thing makes it move. Interesting. I'm going to rotate this rocker arm shaft so that that weird little hash mark is pointing directly to the left. See that mark there? Right there, pointing to the left. And when that's pointing to the left, this should be about perfect. That feels like it's too much. But you'll have the you'll have the feeler gauge. So maybe pointing it directly to the left isn't perfect for it. And in which case, keep turning, like turn this thing back and forth. Try it here, try it here, try it wherever makes that feeler gauge fit in there perfectly where the rocker arm is touching it at the same time as the top of the valve. And while it's touching, you can still move it back and forth. So I actually had to go a little bit more than 90 degrees for this to feel correct. And I like where it's at now. So now I'm going to tighten that nut while holding the rocker arm shaft in place so it doesn't lose its spot. There, nice and tight. Still a little bit of movement. And now I'm going to do the same thing on the exhaust valve. So let me spin this around. Okay. Uh, exhaust valve. You use the point zero zero four inches or the 0 0.10 millimeter uh, feeler gauge. So you slide the feeler gauge in and that's really stinking tight. I can barely get that feeler gauge in there. So uh, if that's the case, that means your rocker arm shaft is probably too tight. So I'm going to give it a little bit of a spin. It's not going very far either way. Kind of a, there we go. So this nut was still a little bit too tight. So now I'm gonna, I got the hash mark pointing straight up. And with it pointing straight up, this is, there is an absolute ton of play in here. Too much. So I am going to turn the rocker arm shaft. I'm going to turn it 90 degrees to the right. See how that looks. See how that feels on the feeler gauge. That's pretty good. It's got some drag. It's touching both the top and the bottom at the same time. Uh, so I like that. So I'm going to do what I've done on all the other ones. And I'm going to put the screwdriver on here. And I'm going to tighten this nut. You could tighten it without the screwdriver in there, but as soon as it's got some tension, it's going to start turning this with it, and then you got to do it over again. So, uh, this here. Tight. Done. Oh, that was... Yeah, that was the exhaust valve. That was the point one. Okay, good. So, we're 
good. That's it. Done. And then put your tappet covers back on. The ones that you put the new gaskets in, the new O-rings. Put your tappet covers on. And those were 17 millimeter. Remember, it's you don't need to make these super tight. Like this is finger tight right now. And after finger tight, I'm going to about there. That's as tight as I'm making it. So do all four of those. And then you have completed a valve job. It's a, uh, completing a valve job is an extremely important and painstaking process, as you just learned. And um, it's expensive. When you take your car in and your car has, you know, if you have an eight cylinder car and there's four valves in every cylinder, you have to do this 32 times. If you have a motorcycle that has four cylinders and there's two valves in each cylinder, you have to do it eight times. Some vehicles have three valves in a cylinder. This one has two. Two valves for this cylinder, two valves for this cylinder. So uh, it's, it's a very tedious procedure. And if you are a mechanic making, charging 80 bucks an hour, and you have a ton of valves, you're gonna make a decent amount of money if you can do it in a you know fair amount of time. Okay, so get these on, and then go ahead and put your points cover back on, and then this cover, I don't know what that's called, but put this cover back on, and then you are done. Let me know if you have questions, shoot me an email.